tonight's virtual public meeting hosted by Arapahoe County. My name is Katie Dawson and I will be your moderator tonight as we talk about the Arapahoe County Transportation Master Plan. First, let me tell you a few things about how this call is going to work. This will be an interactive and informative session. There are several ways to engage with us over the next hour. If you're viewing online, you can submit questions below the video feed and we'll read those questions aloud um, for our panelists to answer. If you joined by phone and would like to ask our panel a question, please press star three on your phone and you'll be transferred to an operator who will take your question. If you're viewing on Facebook Live, you can enter questions in the comment thread and we will also read those questions aloud. We'll try to get to as many questions as possible today, but please be aware this meeting is being recorded and all questions and answers will be available on the project webpage tomorrow. Our goal tonight is to kick off community participation updating the existing Arapahoe County Transportation Master Plan with an eye toward 2040. We want to learn what's most important to you as we begin planning and prioritizing investments for our transportation network to meet the needs of our community well into the future. On our call tonight is Commissioner Nancy Sharp and Commissioner Kathleen Conti, as well as leadership from your County Public Works and Development Department. If you're just joining us again tonight, we want to welcome you. We're going to get started here with brief information from our panelists, followed by taking questions from you. Again, as I mentioned, there will be an opportunity to respond to poll questions, as well as if you're joining on the phone. We ask that you please press star three to ask a question. If you're tuning in online or Facebook Live, submit your question there as well. Now, we're going to get started with the call. I'm turning it over to Commissioner Nancy Sharp. Commissioner, will you please get us started? Hello, and thanks, Katie, and thanks everyone for joining us for this public meeting tonight. COVID-19 has definitely changed some of our plans for public involvement, but we're seeing many benefits to these new ways of coming together. Holding meetings like this makes it easier for people to get involved in county government. Whether you're participating online or on the phone, um, we hope you'll be engaged in the discussion tonight and learn more about how we're working on guiding our growth uh, of our transportation system so that it supports and uh, the excellent quality of life in Arapahoe County. My, uh, I would like to, on behalf of our entire board, make sure our county's transportation network serves our citizens as best as it can. With our involvement and your involvement in shaping the plan, we'll certainly come up with one that reflects your needs and makes traveling by vehicle, transit, bike, or on foot safe and reliable. Our last county transportation master plan was completed in 2010. It resulted in identification of more than 150 projects, including road widening, paving, bike and pedestrian improvements, and interchange and intersection improvements. Now it's time to update that plan with an eye toward 2040. The updated 2040 plan will look at transportation needs for the county as a whole, including the incorporated areas and in both rural and urban areas. So we'll be coordinating with the 13 municipalities in our county, as well as six of our neighboring counties. This coordinated effort will result in a cohesive transportation plan for the region, along with agreement across partnering agencies about near-term and long-term policies and priorities and how we spend our limited resources. In a moment, we'll continue the transportation issues we're fit to talk about the transportation issues we're facing, but our main goal tonight is to hear from you. There'll be plenty of opportunity for you to share your thoughts throughout this call, including a chance to have your questions answered by our transportation experts during this live meeting. So I'd like to um, go ahead and um, and talk about just really briefly um, that Arapahoe County is diverse with one of the busiest employment centers in Colorado along the I-25 corridor to sparsely developed rural areas in the Eastern Plains. We have quaint communities in the West and several in transition and increased residential and commercial development. 
Our county is growing faster than any other county in the metro area. 20 years from now, the population in Arapahoe County is projected to grow by 30% to almost a million people. The biggest challenge with population growth is for our transportation plan to efficiently plan for and meet the mobility needs of additional residents, workers, and visitors throughout the entire county. We look at infrastructure needs, ways to better accommodate bicyclists and pedestrians, technology to optimize existing roadways, and policies to direct and monitor our transportation system. When the 2040 Transportation Master Plan is complete in the next year, we'll have a prioritized list of transportation improvements. From there, we'll get to work with the heavy lifting, which is funding those projects to move them through study, design, and construction phases so that we can all benefit from them. Funding has been one of the biggest challenges that the county and cities have faced in the development of transportation, a transportation system and to meet the needs, the growing needs and changing needs of our community. Historically, transportation improvement projects have been underfunded, delayed much, and, and that funding has delayed much needed projects. We'll look forward to opportunities in the future to help provide additional funding for transportation initiatives. Transportation impacts our daily lives and is an important discussion to have. So thank you once again for joining us tonight. We look forward to your questions and continuing this conversation over the coming months. And thank you again, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Katie Dawson. Thank you, Commissioner Sharp. That was all a lot of really great information. So moving on with our call, we are gonna jump to a poll question. For those of you that are calling in tonight, you can simply use your telephone keypad to select your answer. For those of you online, there is a survey that is on the project page and on Facebook. We'll, paste, we'll post the link in the comments for you to go ahead and find that survey for your online platform. Now we're gonna pose the first poll question. And the question is, which part of the county do you live in? Press one for a rural area within Arapahoe County. Press two for an urban part of Arapahoe County. And press three if you live outside of Arapahoe County. Please record your vote now on the phone or online below the video player, and we'll share the results with you as after we take some questions. But again, the question is, which part of the county do you live in? Press one for a rural area within Arapahoe County, press two for an urban part of Arapahoe County, and press three if you live outside of Arapahoe County. All right, so next you'll hear from Brian Weimer while we're tallying up those votes. He is the Director of Public Works and Development for Arapahoe County and will share about the current state of transportation in the county. We also want to take a moment here before we turn it over to Brian to remind you that if you've recently joined the call, we absolutely want to hear from you. We're going to be taking some questions soon. If you want to submit a, a question and you're on the call, just press star three on your phone to be sent to the operator with your questions. If you want to submit questions and you're online, go ahead and do that on the video feed or in the comments on Facebook. Now we'll hear from the Director of Arapahoe County Public Works and Development, Brian Reimer. Brian, you're on the line. Thank you, Katie, and thank you to everybody who's joining us tonight online and on the phone. I'd like to outline some of the transportation issues we are facing. I'd like to start by letting you know some of the great progress that the county has made implementing many of the high priority projects identified in the 2010 Transportation Master Plan. The county, in many cases, in conjunction with cities and our regional partners, have completed or is in the process of implementing 42 projects ranging from major roadways, interchange projects to smaller trails and intersection projects. Major projects such as the I-25 Arapahoe Road Interchange, which was recently completed, the Arapahoe Road Parker Road Interchange, and the Arapahoe Widening east of uh, Waco uh, are just examples of things that we have completed. We are able to track traffic volumes, travel time trends, on major county roadways. 
And we've seen increase of congestion over the past several years. Between 2014 and 2018, we've seen overall daily vehicle hours of travel increase by more than 15% and a measure of congestion, the travel time index, also increased by more than 15%. Carrying these trends through uh, last year forward to 20 years out, and assuming no additional transportation system improvement, travel times, congestion, and the cost of delay will increase sharply. But we've all seen the impacts of COVID has had on travel in Arapahoe County. Looking at this chart, the blue line on this chart shows pre-COVID travel times on critical corridors with the familiar morning and afternoon peak hour peaks or rush hour peaks. In the early shutdown periods uh, during COVID in March and April, we saw a substantial reduction in travel uh, levels and very limited congestion. Since then, traffic and travel time has come close to returning to pre-COVID levels during the off-peak hours, but during the rush hours, these levels have not returned yet. Many people are staying, are still working at home, or some, um, all or some of the time. We see from this chart, for those online, that weekend traffic fell early in the pandemic, but has returned to close to higher levels. As we proceed with the transportation plan, we're going to closely track the continuing effects of COVID on traffic, as well as work schedules, transit use, bicycles, and walking. Um, we will do the, our best to plan for changes in travel, even considering the possibility that change, like more teleworking, Flexible work schedules could create opportunities for long-term positive effects on congestion. Thank you, Brian. Again, a lot of really great information. Um, while we're going through our first poll question and gathering some results and allowing for you to input questions, we are going to do another poll question. It's something that's been on many people's minds lately as we adjust to this new normal. Again, if you're dialing in, use your keypad to respond. And if you're online, submit your response below the video player. If you're joining on Facebook, look for the survey link in the comment thread. Question number two. Many people began working from home or limiting driving due to COVID. Some people are enjoying this change and may reduce or eliminate how often they commute to work in the future. Are you planning to permanently work from home some or all of the time, even after COVID restrictions are lifted? Press one for no, I will resume commuting to work every day. Press two for yes, I will work from home one to two days per week. Press three for yes, I will work from home three or more days per week. And press four if you do not work outside the home. Again, please record your vote now on the phone and online and we'll share the results with you. If you're on Facebook, remember to take the survey after the event. So while you're answering that question for question number two about your, your commuting impacts after COVID, we do have some responses for our first question, which asked, which part of the county do you live in? So on tonight's call, 91% of our participants indicated that they live in an urban area and 9% are outside of the urbanized areas in rural portions of the counties the county. Now I'll turn it back over to Brian for a few last comments before we take questions from you, the public. Thank you, Katie. Well, unfortunately, there are some downsides to COVID related to transportation. The county uses property tax to fund transportation projects. Since tax assessments could go down in the future due to the changing real estate market, road and bridge projects could be impacted and some may need to be delayed until funding gaps are closed. Also, cities often contribute to county projects, and they use primarily sales tax to fund those projects, which has also declined in recent months. Since people are driving less, they are spending less at the pump, which is, a good, which is good for individual pocketbooks, but tough on the counties. This is because revenues from the state 
gas tax, our largest source of transportation funding. Our county has anticipated an $800,000 uh, reduction in our state funding over the next couple of years, which means we may have to delay some studies or projects if other funding sources aren't identified. Thank you, Brian. We have just covered a lot of information about the existing transportation conditions and impacts of COVID. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a moment to answer some of your questions that have been coming in. As a reminder, press star three to ask a question if you're on the phone and you'll be transferred to the operator. If you're joining online, you can type your question in the box below the player or post a comment on Facebook. So our first question that came in tonight is from John. There's a number of comments related to enforcement in terms of how the county is enforcing bike laws in relation to bike lanes, how they're dealing with trail enforcement, as well as um, maintaining sidewalks and ensuring that there's ADA compliance with all of our infrastructure. Brian, would you like to go ahead and answer that question? Yes, and those are all very pertinent questions that you have, John, and thank you for asking those. Um, as was noted earlier, we'll document all those and we'll consider certainly everything that you've mentioned as part of going into uh, this transportation plan. Relative to enforcement, enforcement is a responsibility of our sheriff's department, so we'll certainly pass that along. Uh, ADA compliance is something that we take very serious within Arapahoe County. And on an annual basis, um, we do fund ADA compliance uh, type of um, activities, handicap ramps, widening sidewalks, providing sidewalks where they may not exist. Um, as part of that, um, we also look at our transition plan that kind of lines out what we plan on doing over um, policies that we have associated with ADA compliance. In terms of enforcement and utilization of bike lanes or uh, cyclists, during our bike and pedestrian master plan, we actually created um, uh, a shortcut on our website that identifies the laws that bicyclists have to follow. And they are essentially considered a vehicle when they're on the roadway. So they have to follow the same laws as a motor vehicle. Uh, enforcement, again, would be that of our sheriff's department, and we will certainly uh, uh, advise them of those concerns that you've brought up. But those will be identified in our transportation as well, transportation master plan as well. So hopefully that answers your questions. And I know there was numerous of them, but uh, they all centered around kind of enforcement and how we are um, uh, meeting the needs of the community. Great, thank you so much, Brian. Um, we are gonna take another online question in just a moment, but a reminder that if you're on the call and you'd like to ask a question, simply press star three to be transferred to the operator. And you can always also submit those comments online or via Facebook. Um, so the next question is from America. And the question is, Centennial has a vision of sustainability which Arapahoe County should help, that should help guide Arapahoe County with transportation in order to reduce carbon reduction. What is planned to electrify all county vehicles and other vehicles within the county? Brian, we'll go ahead and send that over to you. You know, sustainability continues to be an important principle for the county. I'd like to add that resilience um, is also a big issue for Arapahoe County. And um, adding that those are two concepts that will be integrated into this transportation master plan. It will be integrated into this plan in several ways, understanding and um, maintenance and operational costs for transportation improvements to remote fiscal and financial sustainability, integrating transportation and land use planning, um, and also planning uh, transportation that supports comprehensive plan goals for mixed use and compact um, development activities uh, throughout the county. Promoting use of alternative non-automobile travel options, including connected and convenient bicycle and pedestrian networks, bike and pedestrian ride hailing 
partnerships, and other ways to improve access to light rail and bus are other ways that we can create sustainability uh, within our transportation network. The ability to overcome challenges placed on their transportation system by different mode demands, innovative, creative, and lessons learned are ways that we can be resilient when we're planning our transportation system. So hopefully that uh, uh, is appreciated and what we're looking forward relative to um, sustainability and resilience. If you have additional comments or suggestions, I would suggest going to our website and providing those comments and suggestions on what we might be able to do uh, when we look at uh, solutions in our transportation plans. And uh, um, that website will be provided to you at the end of this call. Great, thanks, Brian. We do have one additional online comment that we wanted to get to here before we get that back to poll results. And the question is, how does the county decide which improvements happen first? And we were going to see if the transportation manager for Arapahoe County, Jim Katzer, could go ahead and answer that question for us. Yes, thank you, Katie. Yeah, this is Jim Katzer. Um, I'm the transportation division manager, so it's good to be with you tonight. And that's a great question. And as Commissioner Sharp uh, mentioned earlier, our funding is limited, so we're going to have to be very careful in how we spend this money. So prioritizing these projects correctly is very important. We want to ensure that we meet the needs of our transportation system. So once we develop the full list from this transportation master plan, we'll have project a project prioritization process that will include technical evaluations and public agency stakeholder input. The factors may include safety, regional connectivity, um, continuation of projects already begun along a corridor or are programmed along a corridor, and um, coordination with other regional and local plans. Um, we also want to leverage funding with surrounding jurisdictions and developments, and that's very important and it helps stretch our dollars. Also, multimodal facilities to enhance mobility is, is also an important factor that we'll consider. And then also, one last thing is project readiness and eligibility of federal funds. So I hope that answers your question. It was a great one and something that we will work through and, um, in this process as we go on farther. Great. Thank you so much, Jim. This has been a lot of really great questions so far. Um, just a reminder for those of you on the line, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star three. But before we hear more about the planning process, we're going to go ahead and get to the results of the second survey question. As a reminder, the question was, are you planning to permanently work from home some or all of the time, even after COVID-19 restrictions are lifted? The answers to this question are actually really quite interesting. Um, most of you, 36%, plan to work from home three or more days, even after the COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. About 20% will commute as usual, and another 20% will work from home one to two days per week, and an additional small percentage of you don't work outside of the home. So thank you for all that great input and, and how interesting how the times are changing. So now I'd like to get back to Jim Kosser, the Transportation Division Manager, who's here to outline the planning process for us. So I'll send it over to Jim. All right, thanks again, Katie. And the 2040 Transportation Master Plan update provides an opportunity for community members and agency stakeholders to identify transportation issues and opportunities, develop a vision and associated goals to guide the county, and identify transportation investment priorities. There are two main components of this planning effort. First, we will assess existing conditions and use computer models to understand existing and future traffic demands into the next into into the year 2040. We'll use this data and community input to develop the vision, goals, policies, and strategies for the transportation master plan. In phase two, we'll develop the transportation master plan in this way to help prioritize and fund um, improvements throughout the project will rely on community members like yourselves to guide decision-making. 
We'll also be working with agency stakeholders, including technical staff and elected officials of jurisdictions within the county, economic development groups, and community advocacy organizations to make sure the plan accurately reflects the community needs. There are three main phases in the planning process where we'll need public input. It is critical that we hear from you and those who live, work, and visit um, and recreate in Arapahoe County. First, we want to listen to you. In order to develop a vision for our transportation system, we will listen to the needs and desires of community members. Next, we'll define short, mid, and long-term priorities for future improvements using the input you provide those to you for review. Finally, we'll ask for your help to refine the draft transportation master plan to make sure we're planning for a system that supports your quality of life and makes living, working, and playing in Arapahoe County more enjoyable. At each of these steps, we'll have a public meeting in some format, virtual to allow input online and by phone if we aren't able to meet in person. We'll continue to make sure there are safe ways to participate that give you choices about how you get involved. Please join the project mailing list to stay informed and to learn about engagement opportunities. Do this by sending an email to this email address, transportationplan at arapahogov.com or visiting the project webpage at arapahogov.com forward slash transportation plan. We have a brief survey online as well. And, it's, and we also have an interactive map where you can leave specific comments by location. Or, or just give us your general suggestions on your, our virtual idea board. Again, that email address is transportationplan at arapahogov.com and the web address is arapahogov forward slash transportation plan. For those of you on the phone that haven't, um, didn't have a chance to write this down, feel free to visit the Arapahoe County website under the Public Works and Development webpage. This year, sorry, this long year conversation with our community will result in a final transportation master plan through 2040 that will be presented to the Board of County Commissioners for final approval and adoption. But this is not the end of the process. Instead, it's just the beginning as we embark on the next years of improvement projects to enhance the communities of Arapahoe County. Great, thanks so much, Jim. That is the end of our official presentation to get you up to speed on the transportation issues we're facing and how we're planning for the future in Arapahoe County. We have been getting a lot of questions queued up here and would like to take a, a moment to answer some of those. But just as a reminder, press star three to ask a question if you're on the phone. And if you're joining online, you can always type your question in the box below the player or post a comment on Facebook. So our next question came in online and it is from Kent. Um, the question is, what percentage of the activity of the transportation plan is focused on the urban parts of the county? Go ahead and pass that over again to the transportation division manager, Jim Kotzer. That's a great question. And and as, as you know, most of um, activity is within the urban area. So, but we, but we do need a plan for um, the development in the rural area. So that's a great question, Kent. Um, as, as you know, the development within the, the urban area, most of the development is going to occur along the I-25 corridor in the business sector, and then also on the outer reaches near E-470, and then further along the I-70 corridor. So as the plan um, looks at those, that development and through, um, through modeling, we will help address um, the, the, the future traffic uh, transportation demands on those roads and hopefully plan accordingly and encourage development to develop in a way that won't um, result in congestion in the future. Um, so right now, most of the transportation demand is in the urban area. and It's going to be shifting farther to the east as we into the future. So, Ken, I hope that answers your question. Great. Thanks so much, Jim. Uh, just a reminder for those of you that are on the call or might have just joined, go ahead and press 
star three to leave a question for the and connect with the operator, or you can always put a question into the box under the player on the interactive online uh, portion of the public meeting. Um, we do have another online question that's come in from Andrea. And the question is, how will human services transportation be addressed in the plan? And I think for that question, we'll go over, go ahead and pass it over to the Director of Public Works, Brian Weimer. Thank you, Katie, and thank you, Andrea, for uh, this question. Um, providing human services transportation is a scope of work item within this master plan. Um, as you know, uh, the demographics within Arapahoe County are getting older, and as such, there is a different demand for those individuals to provide transportation to the services they need. Um, we are outreaching to our community resources department, uh, Don Clemmy and his group, uh, to find out what those needs are. We'll also be reaching out to your group, Arapahoe, our Transportation Solutions, Arapahoe County, and the Dr. Mack group, all of, and as well as Dr. Cog. Um, all of those have great information in terms of the demands and the needs for those types of services, and we'll be incorporating that into our transportation plan with some recommendations on how to provide those services. So uh, uh, look forward to that, and if you have input, uh, associated with it or suggestions, please let us know. So hopefully that answers that question. Great. Thanks, Brian. This has been a really fantastic conversation so far tonight. Um, we're going to take a break from our, our official presentation and do a polling question. And our poll question is, what is most important about our transportation system in Arapahoe County? If you're on the phone, go ahead and press 1 for safety two for reliability, three for minimizing congestion, four for maintenance of existing facilities, and five for a system that accommodates all modes of travel. Again, we wanna hear from you about what is most important about our transportation system. If you are on the phone, go ahead and press one for safety, two for reliability, three for minimizing congestion, four for maintenance of existing facilities, and five for a system that accommodates all modes of travel. You can always go ahead and input those comments of your answer online as well. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and take a few more questions. Um, if you're on Facebook, you'll see a link to the survey for after the event. And as a reminder, you can always push star three to connect with the operator to ask your question if you're online or submit it in the player box underneath the online meeting. So um, we're going to go ahead and get to as many of you as possible tonight. And our next question is from Jeff. Um, the question from Jeff is, Aurora has their own master transportation plan. How does Arapahoe County work with the local cities to determine appropriate transportation needs? We're going to go ahead and ask our Director of Public Works, Brian Weimer, to answer that question. All right, thank you, Jeff. Um, and as we referenced in this uh, call, the transportation plan update that we're going to do or that we're uh, underway with is a comprehensive countywide transportation plan. So where jurisdictions such as the cities have their own plan, we start integrating that plan into our plan. The idea of this is to have a uh, seamless, interoperable transportation network and system. Um, when we start looking at transportation needs, there's various things that we look at. Um, there's obviously safety needs. There's opportunities, and those opportunities could be possibly a development coming on board and being able to partner with them. There's also eligibility um, where we could get outside funding and leverage county and or city funding. Uh, we also look at hotspots. We look at where there might be missing gaps. Uh, we look at signal operations and how they operate between jurisdictions. Uh, as you may or may not know, Rapid County is really broken up into unincorporated and 13 different cities within the county. 
And as such, uh, each has their own responsibility. And with this plan, we're looking at how do we comprehensively look and answer the transportation needs. That's why we're looking at the entire county as part of this master plan. So hopefully that answers your question and uh, there will be more to come and more input that you can provide relative to that issue. Great, thanks so much, Brian. We are gonna go ahead and field another question and the question is from Don, uh, an online comment. And the question is, who is responsible for corridor improvements and repairs, the county or the city? We're gonna go ahead and ask Jim Kotzer to answer that question. Go ahead, Jim. All right, great question, Don. And as you travel to the county, it's hard to notice when you go from one jurisdiction to the next. And it's really important, challenging at times to determine who is responsible for um, the roads you are traveling in. Generally speaking, if a highway is a state highway, that's the responsibility of CDOT, which is the Colorado Department of Transportation. If a road is located within a city that's not a state highway, it, it falls under the jurisdiction of the city that it runs through. Um, and then if it's in an unincorporated Arapahoe County, it would fall under the jurisdiction of the county. There's always exceptions to the rule, and there's sometimes agreements made between cities and counties and the state government where um, one jurisdiction will take over the maintenance or the improvements along um, a corridor or along a, a road. And those are called intergovernmental agreements. Um, and those are used basically um, to help improvements along the corridor to be consistent and to be used out. Um, so as you can hopefully understand and appreciate, it's a challenge at times. And one of the, the, the things that we're going to work at addressing in, in the master plan is that inoperability between these jurisdictions. So when you're traveling, um, the driver or the, the traveler should not experience a, a change in service along the corridor. Um, so I hope, so, hope that answers your question, Don. Great, thanks so much, Jim. Just as a reminder for those of you on the call, you can go ahead and press star three to ask your questions, and you can also submit your comments online on Facebook or underneath the player. Our next online question comes from Mark. The question is, why are there no bicycle projects on the list of projects? 80% of local transportation spending in Colorado comes from sales and property taxes and not from user fees. That means money should be fairly distributed among the different transportation modes. Brian Weimer, Public Works Director, would you mind answering that question? I'd be happy to. Uh, first, I'm not sure what list you're talking about, but um, our county transportation plan that we completed a couple, or uh, bike and pedestrian plan that we completed a couple of years ago, really identified uh, a list of projects and prioritized those throughout the county for bike and pedestrians. Uh, we're working through implementing those and have implemented many of them since uh, we undertook that project. Um, one type of uh, uh, implementation that we do is as we're rehabbing roadways, overlaying them, uh, doing slurry seals or some type of surface treatments on those roadways. We look at where we had planned to put in bike lanes. And since we have to restripe those roads anyway after rehabilitation, we are implementing those improvements. So I would suggest looking at our um, bicycle and pedestrian master plan, you'll see where those recommended improvements are. And that will be wrapped in and referenced as part of this overall county master plan. So hopefully that answers your questions. And, and we do believe that there is a need for multimodal um, transportation in Arapahoe County and working toward that. Great, thanks so much, Brian. Um, we are going to continue taking a few more questions. So if you want to ask a question and you're on the phone, reminder to press star three and you can always input those questions online under the player or on Facebook as well. But we are gonna take a quick pause here to answer, um, provide the results of our final poll question, which asked about um, what is most important about our transportation system? And I think 
speaking back to just what Brian said about multimodal improvements being important, 60% of you indicated that a system that accommodates all modes is most important, with the second being 24% indicated minimizing congestion being important. Uh, the third was related to reliability of the transportation system. So again, it's pretty clear that, at least on this call today, that there's a, in, a desire for um, looking at multimodal improvements and, and accommodating all modes of transportation. So thank you all so much for participating in that poll, and now we will go ahead and take a few more questions. Again, if you have a, have a question, go ahead and press star three to get connected to the operator. Our next question is from Patrick. This is an online question that says, front range communities have poor air quality. In addition to facing the negative impacts of climate change driven by greenhouse gases, transportation is one of the major sources of greenhouse gas emissions in our area. Does the Arapahoe County Transportation Plan prioritize actually reducing greenhouse gas emissions? And again, for this one, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Public Works Director Brian Weimer. And challenging question. So thank you for asking that, Patrick. Um, as you probably know, Dr. Cog has set some goals in terms of greenhouse gases for the metro area. Uh, certainly, as we develop our transportation master plan, we'll be looking at how that plays into Dr. Cog's uh, plan and what the, and, and reducing greenhouse gases is an important measure that we can look at as part of our modeling and implementation of a recommended transportation plan. So as part of that, um, it will be later on in the plan development, but certainly one of those elements in, in a performance metric that we'll take a look at and see how uh, our recommended plan is meeting the goals of Dr. Cog. So hopefully that helps answer that question for you. Great. Thanks so much, Brian. We do have lots more questions in the queue, and we're going to get to as many of those as possible this evening. Um, again, press star three to answer or input a question if you're on the phone or put it in the comment box or under the player. Our next question is, again, an online question from Frida. And the question is, what is the current status of the effort to improve the Bellevue and I-25 interchange? Did Denver reject some aspects of the most recent recommendation? And for that question, we are going to turn it over to Jim Kotzer, Transportation Division Manager. All right, thank you. Great question. And the Bellevue and I-25 cord are interchanges very important to the Denver Tech Center area and to those that live around it. So good question. At the at a recent executive committee uh, meeting, um, Denver um, wanted um, and, and proposed um, to, to reach out to the public to get some final input on on some two on two options that were um, put forward by the TAC committee. Um, so currently. Um, the, the TAC committee, along with the project management team, they're looking at um, um, th those two processes, and then they're putting together a, a public um, engagement plan to go to the executive committee for approval, and then we're going to go out to the public in September with that approved plan. Um, so look forward to look for those opportunities um, to get involved there. And those all two alternatives, if you're not familiar um, with this interchange, one was a single point urban interchange was one option and then also a split diamond option. Um, so um, one of the challenges um, of this project is to how best utilize the multimodal aspects of, of this um, interchange with the light rail station being there. Of course, there's a, light, a lot of bike and ped um, transit um, opportunities there as well. So that's what the, the group is tackling right now and getting ready to go out to the public for some more input. Excellent. Thanks so much, Jim. Um, we are going to move on to another online comment from Dan. And the question is, since a large portion of your funds come from the gas tax, how do you anticipate trying to replace this in the future? COVID is not the only factor this for this only factor for this. No increase in, in the gas tax since 1994, and there's now better gas mileage. So how are you going to accommodate that? And we are going to go ahead and throw this question over to Brian Weimer. Brian, go ahead. 
Thank you. And this is very apropos um, in terms of the challenges we're facing within Arapahoe County. As I mentioned before, um, we will be facing over the next couple of years a projected $800,000 reduction. Typically, we get about 9.1 million of um, highway user tax fees just for Arapahoe County, uh, and that is unincorporated. We use those for maintenance primarily. Um, what we're going to have to do is tighten our belt at this point. And that means there's going to be delays in projects. There's going to be delays in the maintenance that we are able to provide, uh, our equipment purchases, and so on and so forth to accommodate that. As part of looking at uh, our funding issues, this transportation plan will be used to educate the public of where our funding is, our demands, and uh, uh, the shortfalls that we're facing. And so if we want to improve our transportation system, there's going to have to be some hard decisions made relative to where that additional funding can come from. And for the most part, um, that is some sort of tax that we may have to look at to support transportation in Arapahoe County. Um, it's a little bit premature to say what that need is at this point in time. Uh, and we'll find out as we move through the transportation master plan effort, what those needs are, uh, what the desires of the public are, and what performance standards they're looking at this transportation pr plan providing. So uh, with that, there's more to come on transportation funding, and I think we'll have a, a lot more discussion on that. Luckily, though, we believe that the uh, gas tax will come back uh, at some point in time, back to pre-COVID uh, measures, but we don't know when that is. So we're planning accordingly based on those projections of reduced uh, funding. So hopefully that answers your questions. Great, thanks, Brian. Again, we just want to thank all of you for being on the call or virtually online with us tonight. As a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, press star three on the phone. If you're online, you can type those questions in the box below the player or post a comment on Facebook. We do have some time for additional questions. And our next question that has come up in the queue is from Andrea. And the question is, is the county looking at ITS? And for, for those of you out there, ITS is Intelligent Transportation Systems. So for this question, we're going to go ahead and pass it over to Jim Kosser. Jim, what can you tell us about ITS? Great. Um, great question. And um, within the Transportation Division, we have a traffic operations section, and they are looking into implementing ITS. And we have the current activities that we have um, with the county is coordinating with the city of Centennial, with Greenwood Village, um, with CDOT um, to, to come up with a plan on how to best implement ITS within the county. Um, one of the, the ongoing efforts is to, to get our fiber connected so that there is um, traffic signal and coordination within um, these jurisdictions. And we're neighbors and we need to coordinate our signal, so that's what we're doing. Um, so. Um, with this um, priority, um, sorry, sorry, with these projects, with, with these organizations that I mentioned, further projects will be developed. Um, and we're participating in, um, in, in two grant opportunities, or two projects are going after a grant, and one's with Littleton, and one with, is with Greenwood Village and with Centennial. So I hope, hope that answers your question. More to come on the ITS front. Great. Sounds like lots of exciting things are, are coming down the pipe. Um, we are going to go ahead and do another online question that is in the queue tonight from Jeff. And the question is, as development progresses from west to east, we seem to be abandoning the grid system. Newer curvy arterials look great on a map, but it's less efficient to move around. What are your thoughts on why the new road layout is better? And for that, we are going to go ahead and turn it over to Brian Weimer. Brian? Thank you, Katie, and thanks, Jeff, for your question. Um, as we move east in our current transportation plan, um, there will be areas where we'll call it a transition area that is transitioning from rural to suburban, and we will continue to have um, rural-type development just based on our zoning, availability of water. Um, but in those areas, we are looking at a grid system. 
Sixth Avenue, um, Manila, Watkins, um, are all roadways that we're looking at keeping on alignment. Uh, even in our existing transportation plan, we had a hierarchy of roadways that was guiding uh, policies for new development. So with that, uh, I don't know necessarily that we'll be changing an arterial system that will look uh, curvilinear and we'll try to keep it um, uh, with a hierarchy of moving traffic uh, those arterials being more straight, um, maybe collectors that might be more curvilinear. And then obviously as we get into uh, residentials, uh, it could be more like um, uh, existing suburban areas. And so that's the way we're probably gonna look at this. But if you have different opinions on that, we'd certainly like to hear that as part of this planning effort. Great, thanks, Brian. Um, again, as a reminder, with, for those of you on the call tonight, go ahead and press star three to ask a question on the phone and keep those questions coming in the comment box online. We're getting a lot of those in the hopper tonight. So our next question is a great online comment. And the question is, how will the county work with Aurora, Centennial, and other cities to make sure that roads and trails work together throughout the whole county? And we're going to go ahead and turn that question over to Jim Kosser again, the Transportation Division Manager. Jim? Yes. Um, thank you for the question. And it, it is a challenge in, in working with these cities, but um, it is possible, and we've done that. Um, so one of the ways that we've done that is continuing to meet frequently. Um, and there's a, a group called the Arapahoe County Transportation Forum that is being organized and that has been meeting well over a year. And that includes all representatives um, from um, from the cities within the within the county and the towns. So that's one way um, to to continue um, to coordinate. Also, a detailed review of of city and town transportation and comprehensive plans, and incorporating their goals and policies and project plans into the county's plans, and having conversations about um, what those plans mean to those cities. So understanding each other's values and their priorities. Also, we plan to continue to work directly with individual cities on identifying um, and then designing and funding those projects on roads, trails, and corridors that are in multiple jurisdictions. And there's numerous projects that we have currently ongoing um, that do this. And for example, um, Gun Club and Quincy, um, that interchange, and then also the High Plains Trail near 17 Mile House. Um, these are joint projects with um, these jurisdictions. And we also continue to will continue to work together on funding applications to Dr. Cog, which is the regional MPO, Metropolitan Planning Organization that distributes money. And then also with um, the, the Colorado Department of Transportation, along with the uh, federal agencies. So whenever we um, come together on a project and we, um, we put together a joint application for these fundings, it kind of gives more weight um, to, to get that funding. So we plan on continuing to do that and leveraging our funding with these organizations. And also there's, practically speaking, as I mentioned in the previous um, question, getting our fiber network connected so that we have um, signals um, that communicate to each other. And we, so we have inoperability along these corridors. It's very important as well. So the transportation master plan um, will be utilized to accomplish these things. Great, thanks again for, for all these great questions and good dialogue with answers. Um, to let you all know, we have time for probably just a couple more questions this evening, but we want to thank you so much for joining us. To learn more about the Transportation Master Plan or to submit comments, visit arapahogovcom slash transportation plan. And as a reminder, our, our call screeners, as well as all the comments that are coming in online, will be logged, and the staff will be responding to those questions after tonight's event and posting them to the Transportation Master Plan webpage. So again, visit that page for updates and to be able to provide additional comments and input through our online engagement tools. Our next question we are going to have here tonight is from Tammy, another online question. And the question is, will the plan include a regional bike pedestrian plan? Regional meaning cities within Arapahoe County and the neighboring counties. 
So for that one, Brian Weimer, we're going to go ahead and ask you if you can answer that question. I certainly can, Katie, and thank you. Thank you, Tammy, for this question. And we've had quite a bit um, of questions regarding bike and pedestrians. So that's giving us an indication that there's an interest in that uh, within Arapahoe County. As I've mentioned before, Arapahoe County, along with the cities within the county, um, performed a regional uh, bike and pedestrian master plan uh, a couple of years ago and wrapped that up. Included in that plan were regional facilities that uh, incorporated um, cities as well as unincorporated Rappo County. It also looked at how they tied to adjacent jurisdictions, um, Douglas County, for instance, or the city and county of Denver, um, Jefferson County. And so that plan uh, is really the detail uh, plan for pedestrian bikes within Arapahoe County, but we'll certainly integrate that within this transportation master plan because it is a critical element uh, of transportation network within the county. So hopefully that answers your question and uh, I'll be happy to uh, talk to you more about that, Tammy. Great, thanks so much, Brian. Um, a reminder of we are running short on time here. We have lots of questions and we will be getting to those um, as staff responses and, and putting the, those up on our project website after tonight's meeting. We appreciate all of your participation and want to make sure we get back to you. We do have one more question that we have time for tonight and that is a question that came in online from Doug. And the question is, what coordination do you contemplate with RTD as you address mass transit needs in the county as part of your master plan? Brian, would you go ahead and answer that question for us? I certainly can. Thank you, Mr. Tisdale. I appreciate the input and the comment relative to RTD. Uh, RTD will be part of uh, our technical committees uh, as we move forward. We're also part of the Reimagine RTD um, plan that's currently going on with RTD. Uh, we have representatives from the Rappo County Transportation Forum, both on the elected and the technical committees uh, with that uh, effort that RTD is doing. So that will allow us to integrate uh, findings coming out of that um, uh, effort, as well as the findings that we're coming up with uh, with our transportation plan and using the many studies that have been done before, uh, such as the um, BRT studies that, that uh, our RTD has completed. We'll be integrating those and seeing how those work within our plan ultimately as well. So we do see RTD and CDOT being highly uh, involved with the planning effort that we're doing here, and we'll greatly appreciate their input and feedback as we move forward. Thanks so much, Brian. It, it sounds like there's a lot of really great planning happening around the region, and Arapahoe County is integral, integrally involved in all of those. It's, it's really exciting what's happening around the region. So thank you again to all of you for being on the call. This concludes our virtual public meeting for this evening. As a reminder, we'll provide a written summary of all questions received this evening with answers from our staff experts. Just visit arapahogov.com slash transportation plan to access the information. And don't forget to take the short survey and provide your additional comments on our interactive commenting map and our virtual idea wall. Thank you again all for participating and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.